Good evening. Welcome to our live stream Bible study. It's awesome to have you join us again for this study. Chapter 9 of the great book, Move Into More, The Limitless Surprises of a Faithful God. And we've been having a great time uh, doing this study and uh, we're going to have a great time tonight as we uh, study chapter 9 of this great book. Thanks for joining us tonight. I hope these studies are a blessing to you. Uh, try to pick uh, topics that uh, will uh, minister to people and be relevant to the lives that we live. And uh, hopefully uh, you will find uh, these studies to be just that for you. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come together to study your holy word, this book based on the principles of your word. Lord, I pray that you will help us tonight open the uh, eyes of our hearts, open our understanding so that these spiritual principles can take root and take lodging in our hearts and find application in our lives. Now, Lord, speak to us through this study and uh, accomplish your purpose in our lives. Uh, for our good and for your glory, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, as I said, we're continuing the study tonight of the great book by Pastor Choco de Jesus, entitled "The Blessings," or excuse me, entitled uh, "Move Into More." And uh, tonight's uh, chapter title, as I said, is "The Blessings of a Life with More." The author begins with a quote from this one from an anonymous source, uh, says this, be happy when God answers your prayer, but be happier when you are an answer to others' prayer, others' prayers. Uh, let me read that again. Be happy when God answers your prayer, but be happier when you are an answer to others' prayers. That's a neat thought, isn't it? He uh, begins the, the content of the chapter by telling about a, an awesome experience he had. He was privileged to um, be visiting uh, the nation of Burkina Faso. Uh, it was formerly known as Upper Volta, and now it's known as uh, Burkina Faso. And he had the privilege to meet with the king of that nation, uh, and uh, as he met him, there was a very strict protocol. He was told he couldn't even look uh, at the king, but had to look at his translator uh, and would communicate that way. But during that meeting, the king broke protocol and looked directly at him and uh, began to uh, ask him questions. Uh, he asked him uh, his reason for being in uh, that nation, Burkina Faso. And uh, the pastor's answer was, Tell your king that I am here as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. Tell him that I serve a king named Jesus Christ. And after that, uh, the king, through the translator, uh, asked him uh, to pray for him. And so he did, and he said the formality melted away, and the king uh, ended up taking him on a tour of his palace into his private rooms, uh, his private residence, and uh, he said it was a great blessing, a great experience. And he closes the section by saying this, this, this extended spontaneous visit with the king was a blessing from the Lord far more than anything I could have tried to arrange myself. I treasure that experience as a powerful reminder. When you trust God for more, his blessings always follow. I'll repeat that last line. When you trust God for more, his blessings always follow. In a section entitled, Blessed are the Blessers, he says the words bless, blessed, and blessing are overused but misunderstood by most people. Uh, a lot of people, he says, don't really have an idea of what those words mean. I want to encourage you to sign in. Uh, by the way, we have a couple folks watching. Great to have you with us. 
please, if you're watching, sign in, let us know that you're here. Share your comments and your thoughts with us uh, tonight as we ask you to do every week. Uh, he quotes James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So every blessing comes from Almighty God. He tells us that uh, in God's word we find three words in the original languages, Hebrew and Greek, that are translated bless or blessing. Um, when God in Genesis 12, uh, the first three verses, promises Abraham to bless him and make his name uh, great, uh, the original word in the Hebrew used is barak, which literally means to kneel before someone or something. Uh, so he says in this context, the meaning points to the commitment God and Abraham made to one another. And then he says a more familiar connotation perhaps of blessing is used in the Psalms and Proverbs fr from the Hebrew word esher, um, implying joy and happiness, the feelings we probably think of when we call ourselves blessed. The Psalms actually begin with this word uh, in Psalm 1-1 when it says, Blessed is the man or the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Um, and then in the New Testament, or written in the original Greek, there's uh, the Greek word makarios, uh, which conveys a sense of happiness, delight, and fulfillment. Uh, it's used in the Beatitudes in the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. I preached on that a, uh, a few months ago. Um, makarios actually means to lengthen or to make long, and so therefore to bless, uh, to pour blessings upon. Um, he makes this point, and, and it's a good point. He says, when we consider being blessed or counting our blessings, we often think of material, physical, concrete items we enjoy, such as our house, a warm bed, good food, clean water, a car that runs, clothes to wear, and so on. And he says, these tangible uh, manifestations are all surely blessings from the Lord. Uh, but the way Jesus uses the word here in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, uh, this expresses something spiritual, something uh, invisible, eternal, and self-contained. Um, no matter what our external circumstances are, we are genuinely blessed as God's children and followers of Christ. Um, so I want you to catch the point he's making here. He says, we typically think of material blessings um, you know, material goods, our house, our clothes, food to eat, uh, you know, running car and other uh, material blessings. And those are blessings. But there are other kind of blessings that aren't necessarily tangible, but are spiritual. And uh, he makes the point that you can be in a situation where you may not be experiencing as many of the physical blessings, say, as you would like or as someone else, but you can still be blessed very powerfully by the Lord. So we need to understand that, uh, that clarification. Um, he says the reason we get confused about blessings sometimes is that we focus on what we can see while God focuses on the unseen, on what's in our hearts. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Um, he says, uh, Some of the problem in asking God for material blessings is that we don't often consider our true motives. When we ask God, for example, for a new car, uh, do we really need a new car? Or do we need a bigger house that we asked for? Are we asking for more money because we need it or because we uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, want to hoard it? Uh, or, do we, or do we want it to, to advance God's kingdom? He says most of our human, most of the time our human motives are usually mixed as Christians. We want to serve God, but we also want the security that comes from paying our bills on time and replacing the washer when it breaks. <laughs> well, we all feel like that. I know I do. And he says there's nothing wrong with the enjoyment of any of the material blessings God gives us, 
but it becomes a problem and we need to catch this. It becomes a problem when we start to feel entitled and try to treat God like a divine machine. Okay, so do we understand that distinction? There's nothing wrong with enjoying the material blessings God gives us, but the problem comes when we feel entitled, as if God owes us something. Um, and he says that's not the way blessings work. There's a relationship between our obedience to God and the blessings we receive. But our obedience shouldn't ever be motivated by what we get out of it, but simply by the motivation to please God by obeying Him. Okay? Uh, and so in the next section here, picking up on that point, uh, the next section is entitled Trust and Obey. And he says one of the hardest parts of our, children, our Christian walk is to stay obedient. Boy, that's the truth, isn't it? We want our kids, parents, we want our kids to obey us, uh, but uh, sometimes we have a problem obeying our Heavenly Father. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, in the New King James Version, Paul says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And the author says, I like that choice of the word steadfast. This is a faith that has consistency and continuity. And he mentions that it's the faith we saw listed in Hebrews 11 in the Faith Hall of Fame. You might remember an earlier session, we, we looked at that faith chapter, Hebrews 11. Uh, people such as Abel and Noah and Abraham were mentioned there. And he picks up on Abraham. Of course, we, we know Abraham's obedience was uh, most... Uh, prominently displayed when God told Abraham to sacrifice his only son that he had waited for so long, his promised son, to the Lord. And um, he asked the question, have you ever thought about this? What if Abraham refused? He said, Sorry, God, that's too much. Or what if Isaac uh, refused and pushed his father away and said, I'm not going to let you sacrifice me. Are you crazy? You can picture a son saying that, can't you? And he, so he makes the point uh, that anytime we rationalize, justify, or outright refuse to obey God, we miss out on some blessing he wants to give us. Uh, so uh, obedience, blessings are tied to obedience. Um, and he says, in our crazy fast world, we often move too fast to maintain the steadfast faith and patience that obeying God requires. What does he mean by that? Well, he says, we've grown accustomed to immediate gratification everywhere in our lives. But God, you know, he mentions Wi-Fi coverage, microwavable meals, online shopping, you know, quick stuff. And I love that. I'm, I'm just being honest. Maybe you do too. But he says God's timing can't be rushed, is the point he's making. So, we get impatient wanting the answers to our prayers, wanting the blessings that we think we're entitled to, and so we take matters into our own hands. Um, he says, even with the disciplines we practice to grow closer to God, we sometimes adopt a consumer attitude and refuse to continue if uh, they don't make us feel the way we want to feel. We get off the altar where God is calling us to sacrifice our own wishes because we refuse to wait. Um, I think back to an earlier study we did uh, some of you may remember a few years ago, leveling the praying field. Remember that study? All about prayer. And the author said many times people say they give up or they stop praying because it doesn't work. What do they mean by that? Well, I didn't receive what I prayed for, what I asked for. And the author, if you remember in that book, said that's a misunderstanding of what prayer is all about. God is not a... Um, divine vending machine, <laughs> you know, we just put in our prayers and we get out what our selection is. Prayer is communication with God and God does hear us and he communicates with us. Uh, and, and that's the purpose of it. So same idea here in, in, in this chapter of, of this book. He says, 
we, we get impatient and so we want to get off the altar. In other words, we, we want to stop doing what we're doing because we say it doesn't work or I'm not getting what I think I should get. You ever feel that way? You get frustrated with God. Uh, he, the author here says, so often God tells us, stay put, keep going, be still before me. He says he wants us committed to doing his work because his requests of us have eternal value. So the point isn't how much blessing am I going to receive? God does bless us. But the point is how long can I remain obedient? How long can I have a steadfast faith? Can I be immovable? Can I be consistent? Even when things aren't going well or I don't see everything that I want or that I ask for uh, as quickly as I want to. Am I going to give up? Prayer doesn't work. Or am I going to be consistent? Am I going to be faithful? Am I going to keep, uh, you know, plugging ahead and being obedient and faithful to God? Um, he refers back to that scripture I read in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that Paul said, we should always be abounding in the work of the Lord. And the word abounding, he says, means to go above and beyond, to go beyond the minimum, in other words, uh, not just scraping by or doing the minimum uh, to get by. And we should be abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Because the work of the Lord has eternal value. When we do what God calls us to do, we're doing things of eternal value, and those are the most important things to be doing. Um, so in the next section, he moves on, and he, I, I love this uh, little title, this little next section here. It's entitled Blessonomics 101. <laughs> You've heard of Economics 101? Blessonomics 101. I think he made up a word there, but we understand the meaning. He says, Scripture makes it clear that God blesses us not so we can live in greed and, and indulgent pleasure, but so that we can bless others. Boy, if, if, you, if you have the book, man, I'd say highlight that. I have that highlighted here uh, in, in, in my copy. God blesses us not so that we can live in greed and indulgent pleasure, but so that we can bless others. And uh, that passage in Genesis 12, I referred to the first um, three verses. Verses 2 and 3 say this. God is speaking to Abraham. He said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and, listen to this, and you will be a blessing. God concludes the promise to Abraham by saying all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. God, he makes the point, God blesses us and gives us good gifts so we can be a blessing and give good gifts to others. Um, 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11 in the New Testament says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever Amen. That's 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. So God blesses us, not just so we can feel good or have everything we want or hoard the blessings, but so that we can bless others. I can't stress that enough. If you hear nothing else in this session tonight, hear that. God blesses you and me so we can bless others. Now, how, how can I do that? Well, um, the author lists some ways. He says you can be a blessing to others by simply speaking kind words, by volunteering your time in ministry, by giving of your financial resources, by sharing your possessions, by giving food, and simply by sharing your testimony of God's grace and goodness in your life. Uh, so <laughs> he concludes the paragraph by saying you just need to show up. In other words, just seek to be a blessing to people and there'll be opportunities. Um, he says that's why we're here. The opportunities are all around us. And he makes this point further, and we need to catch this. The more we seek to bless others, the more God will allow us to take part in their blessing. And in the process, we're blessed in return. 
As you empty yourself and pour into somebody's life, God pours into you. Have you found that to be true? I know I have. Man, I can, I can testify to the veracity of that statement. Um, anytime I seek to be a blessing to someone else and they're blessed through me and God uses me, I find that I am blessed abundantly. Um, Proverbs 11, 25 in the English Standard Version, whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. Um, so he says, never miss out on the opportunity to bless someone because you'll be blessed in the process. Now, that's not why we do it. And we're going to talk more about that. We don't bless others to receive. We bless them because that's why we're blessed in the first place. But a side benefit is as we bless other people in any of these ways we mentioned and, and a variety of other ways, we are blessed materially, physically, financially, some, sometimes, maybe, but we're blessed in other ways too. We're enriched spiritually and in other ways. Uh, so uh, remember, as I said, if you remember nothing else, we are blessed. Think of all the ways you're blessed financially, materially, uh, many ways. We are blessed to bless others. Uh, then in a, in a section entitled, Did You Hear Something? He uh, moves to a story in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7, uh, a period when there was a terrible famine in Israel, so severe, and this, I, I can hardly even say this, but it, it was so severe that mothers even ate their own children. That's how, how awful uh, the famine was. That's, that's practically unimaginable. And in uh, 2 Kings 7, verses 3 through 8, it tells the story of four lepers, uh, four leprous men. You know, leprosy was a terrible, terrible disease. Uh, and uh, lepers were uh, outcasts in society. And they were at the entrance to the gate uh, of Israel. And uh, they said, if we, uh, in Jerusalem, and they said, if we go into the city, uh, there's a famine, we'll die there. There won't be any food for us. Now, uh, let us surrender to the Syrians. They may kill us, but if they do, uh, we'll die quickly. In other words, we won't die by a lack of food. And who knows, maybe they'll have mercy on us and uh, let us live. And so it says they got to the Syrian camp and they found it empty because the Lord had caused um, the army to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses. And they thought, oh, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and other uh, and the Egyptians to attack us. And so they fled their camp and they left their camp intact, their tents, horses and donkeys, everything. And there was food there. And it says these four lepers, they went into the camp and they ate and drank and... Uh, <laughs> which was pretty incredible because, again, again, this was a time of a terrible famine. Um, and uh, so, so they did that and they were blessed. And this was something God had done. But then in the next section, continuing his study of, of this story, the next section entitled Spread the Word, uh, these lepers uh, said to themselves, you know, we can't keep this good news to ourselves. Here we are, just four of us. Uh, we need to pass the news on. And so that's what they did. They passed the news on uh, to uh, Israel that uh, there were supplies that God had had given to the, had made known to them and that were available. And so uh, they realized that they were blessed to find uh, this supply and this food, but they said, we can't keep it to ourselves. We have... Um, we have uh, been blessed and now we have to bless other people. Um, and he says, um, well, how, now how does he apply this, the author? He says, well, uh, comparing ourselves today to these four lepers, we have been blessed 
far greater than they were. They were blessed with some food and some provision. We have been blessed with the greatest blessing of all, salvation, forgiveness of our sins, the, the, the blessings of a mighty God. And he says, just like, just like those um, uh, lepers who received this tremendous blessing and couldn't keep, a, keep it to themselves, he says, how can we keep this greatest blessing that we've received to ourselves? Well, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for it. How can we keep it to ourselves? Um, sometimes he says, uh, the, the enemy, he says, wants us to think that he is all powerful, the enemy, uh, but that is not the truth. God has already won the victory against the enemy. We know that. And so um, he wants to bless us with, with all the, the spiritual blessings and us for us in turn, to share that blessing with others, to tell them of the goodness of God. The, has God been good to you? You need to tell somebody. Has he, he saved you? He's, he's met financial needs. He's gotten you out of predicaments. Man, you need to tell somebody because there may be somebody in a similar circumstance. Somebody doesn't know the Lord or somebody, maybe even a Christian who is having a financial difficulty or some other difficulty. And God has blessed you in a way that they need to be blessed. You need to tell them hey, that, that God is good and bless them. Um, uh, Romans 4, 7 and 8 says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. Have you been forgiven of your sin? Has the Lord come into your life and, and cleansed you and forgiven you of your sin and given you eternal life? Uh, the, the Lord says you are blessed. And so we've received the greatest blessing possible and now, he says, we need to uh, make that blessing available to others. I know that's nothing new. If you're, you're a Christian, you've heard that many times that we need to share what God's done for us. But, you know, we need to be reminded sometimes. You know, it's good for us to go to church or share in a Bible study like this and enjoy even spiritual blessings. But, man, we can't keep it to ourselves. Um, thanks, thank you to those who are watching. Uh, anybody else watching, if you haven't signed in yet, please uh, sign in. Let us know that you're there. Share your comments. Maybe maybe a principle that we're sharing, uh, you, can, you can briefly tell how it's worked out in your life and, and bless everybody else who's, who's uh, with us tonight. So share your thoughts or maybe you have a question. Uh, we'd love for you to, to share that with us uh, through the study tonight. Um, a section entitled Where the Water Is. Uh, he says, when our lives reflect the beauty of God's holiness and joy, people will say, what's up with you? I want what you have. When our actions demonstrate the servant heart of Jesus, others will say, why are you doing that? And why do you seem so happy doing that? Uh, when our voices praise the Lord who saved us, who loves us and gives us life, those around us will say, introduce me to this God you know. I don't think he sounds like I, I thought he did. And then he mentions an African proverb. I love this. African proverb goes like this. There is only one crime worse than murder on the desert, and that is to know where the water is and not tell. I'll share that again. There is only one crime worse than murder on the desert, and that is to know where the water is and not tell. And he makes the point, and boy, what a point it is, we have the water. We have what the scripture calls living water. We have the, the living water that gives us life. Um, in, uh, and, 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 and so God has blessed us with these spiritual blessings. And we have to tell, we have to share it with those who are around us. Uh, in Zechariah 8.13 in the New King James Version, the Lord tells each of us, he says, I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear. Let your hands be strong. So uh, understanding that God has blessed us to be a blessing, then the author asks the question. I love these pointed questions to make us think. And I want you to think about this as we move toward the conclusion of the study tonight. So he asks, what has God placed in your hands to do? What has God assigned for you to do with what he has given to you?
put another way. He has dropped it in no one else's hands but yours. Someone is waiting to be blessed for God's glory with what you have in your life right now. So what has God blessed you to be able to do to bless someone else? How has God blessed you to be able to bless someone else? Uh, boy, that's a pointed question, isn't it? Uh, he says, he ends the, the chapter by saying this, Never forget, you have been ordained to be a blessing. God has partnered with you. God has empowered you. God pours into you so you can share the blessing. Um, boy, this is something for us to think about. You know, so many people, so many Christians even, have the mentality, boy, I, I want more. I want blessings. And we should want more from God spiritually. Uh, we talk about wanting more. We, we should have a desire for more from God, but not just material blessings or earthly things. But, but our desire for more shouldn't be just so I can hoard and bless me and me, 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 me. But we should want more to bless others. What have you done lately? to bless someone else. What of your blessing, material or spiritual even, have you used to bless other people? Are you in the habit of blessing other people? I think if we really get a hold of this point of this session tonight, we are going to begin looking at things a little differently in life instead of hoping and wanting and asking and you know now there's nothing wrong with praying and asking god to meet our needs the bible says we have a need we can go to god so there's nothing wrong with that but you understand what i'm saying do we have the mentality oh i just want i want more i want more money a bigger house bigger, bigger car better clothes why want the, and, and just a focus on receiving more or is our focus on how can i bless somebody how can i minister to somebody what, what, to whom can I speak a word of kindness or maybe give a financial blessing, maybe even anonymously if possible? Or, uh, who can I encourage? Who can I help? Who can I do an, an act of kindness for? Who can I bless? If that's not a, a, a consistent mentality in your life and you respond to this study and make it a consistent mentality, every day of your life and say to yourself, who can I bless today? Who can I bless this morning, this afternoon, this evening? Who can I be a blessing to? If you make a conscious effort to do that because you've been blessed by God, it will transform your life. No question about it. Who can I bless? Who can I be a blessing to? He closes with a prayer as always, praying for more. I want to share this prayer with you. Father, thank you so much for reminding me that you have purposed me to be a blessing to everyone around me. Using the abundance of abilities, talents, and resources that you have entrusted to me, I can now be a conduit of your mercy, grace, joy, and love to those in need. You save me so that I can speak with my words and even louder by my actions the power of Jesus Christ to forgive sin and change lives. Everything I have, Lord, comes from you. My family, my home, my job, my money, my health, everything. I praise you and thank you for how you have blessed me in so many ways. I give all that I have back to you now, Lord, to use, your, to use for your kingdom. Guide me and direct me and show me how I can use my blessings to bless others. Here's my life. I am yours. Amen. That's a powerful prayer to conclude a powerful study. Have you been blessed? I know I have. Oh, far beyond what I deserve. I've been blessed. And I suspect you have too. You know, even on, as I like to say, even on our worst days, we can count many, many, many blessings from Almighty God. Too many to count, actually. And uh, let's, let's, let's hold on to the central... Um, truth of this session tonight. We have been blessed to be a blessing 
ask God to help you to see uh, who you can bless and uh, follow through with that as he helps you to see that. And as I said, it'll transform your life. We're blessed to be a blessing. Well, uh, this concludes our study for tonight. Uh, I think it's been a great, great chapter, a great study. Thank you for tuning in. As I always say, feel free to keep the conversation going. Share your thoughts uh, here in the thread even after the live stream ends. And let others uh, be uh, blessed by interacting uh, with your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this, whether you watched, have watched it live or whether you watched the recording on our Facebook page or uh, on our YouTube page. Uh, we appreciate so much you uh, joining with us for this great study. I pray that you have a, a blessed uh, rest of the week uh, and uh, that you uh, use that. Uh, uh, God helps you to use that to bless others. Have a good night, a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. Good night.